Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Shake Up. Uh, if you guys handicapped Saturday, I had a really big score on Saturday. I hit a 35 to 1 shot and then hit the double. But uh, some of you guys uh, asked me to go over what I, th I saw on this uh, 35 to 1 shot. So I thought I'd just make a l quick little video going over it. Uh, I was actually thinking about doing a video before I was asked because it has a lot of things that I've just been talking about a lot. Uh, rematch races, what to look for, uh, trying to look for reasons to beat the big favorites, uh, the importance of notes, and uh, even a little bit of watching videos and everything in here. So uh, i definitely uh, going to go over this race. But anyways, it was the 11th race. Uh, and leading up to the 11th race, uh, I wasn't having a real good day. Uh, part of that was I thought the uh, inside of the track changed a little bit. I thought it was, uh, they had a seven horse uh, win earlier at like uh, four to one. No, they had a seven to, they had a seven horse win at about eight to one. I want to say they had an eight horse win at four to one, and then they had a 10 horse win at 23 to one earlier in the day. And you guys know that I'm always liking the outside. Uh, then it kind of cooled down. They had a one horse that was a big favorite that I thought couldn't lose. He didn't lose. Uh, and then I want to say there was a two horse at three to one that I thought dominated the field. Uh, he struggled. He did win. He did get hooked and uh, passed on the rail by the full horse, and then he battled back. But uh, Parsons and I was playing, and we were still kind of thinking it might have been uh, a little bit of an outside bias uh, that day. But that's not the whole reason why I caught this horse. Uh, let me grab my thing. So the key to me in this race, and to be honest, I wasn't that interested in this race, uh, but I wasn't having that good of a day. It was the last double. Uh, we had a lot of time. So, I, you know, I'm going to look at it. But it didn't look that uh, big of potential. Uh, the five-horse sound machine, he got really good marks. Uh, and then I noticed that uh, four of these horses all ran on May 29th. And that May 29th is the key to this whole race, to me. Uh, and what I did, I'm actually going to try to show the replay, but there was some scratches in that race. So this, uh, this, this that I have in blue on the side is actually the number of the horse that day. Uh, the post positions are uh, different. So he was a two horse in the one hole. Uh, the six is coming out of that race. He was in the nine hole. Or I'm sorry, he was in the, he was number nine. These are the numbers. Uh, the eight horse was in that race. He was number eight. And the three horse was in that race. He was number 10. And uh, I got the May 29th uh, mark there. So I just had that it was stalking closing. Actually, I didn't look up his race that day. That was three races ago, so that was four races. So I didn't get to look up his race that day at that time. So let's just go to someone that I did look up. I had that it was early pressing day. I had it was early pressing day. Uh, the five was average, match strides with the fastest winner, which he was, and then he won that race. So Sound Machine is like four to five, and he bet, beat all these horses on May 29th. Uh, the nine horse was in that race. It was an early pressing day. He was one tick slower than the fastest winner. Earned a heart went too fast to win, so that's automatically catching my eye. And, you know, I don't have the final fraction. Uh, and then the eight ran the exact same race as the six did. EP, uh, one tick slower than the uh, fastest winner at the first call. Went too fast to win at the second call. And uh, it's not that I don't have the uh, thing for the third fraction. Uh, there was just a mix of uh, five furlong races and six furlong races and seven furlong races. And it looks like I used the fraction for the five furlong race just because there was more of them. 
So whenever you see me not have three fractions, that's usually what's going on. So uh, I, I don't have that fraction available for me. Uh, so anyways, uh, I wanted to watch this replay. Um, so I'm, I, you know, the hearts caught my eyes and, you know, hearts catches my eyes more than triangles. Uh, but this being a rematch race, uh, I've been on a little kick about watching replays, uh, lately. Uh, so let me just write down the horses we want to watch. The four horses in that race. Let me just write them down here. Eight, nine, two, and ten. So I'm actually going to play this race. So we want to watch the 8, 9, 2, and 10. And you tell me what the hell, hell you see here. So the 8's getting the lead. 2 has the inside, and usually we think the inside is where you want to be. Nine is dueling at forty-five to one. So the the, the nine and the eight are uh, dueling. Nine's the farthest horse outside. They want one tick slower than the fastest winner. Now the nine's dueling between three horses. They're all right there. And I'm liking what I see about the nine and the eight. Eight got over to the rail. You know, usually I always say, I think the rail's better at Gulfstream. Two's doing nothing but passing uh, horses in three-horse speed duel. And I'm watching this replay. I said, I thought the nine ran pretty good. I thought the eight did a great job in in uh, fighting off the nine and holding on for second. And I thought the 10 kind of closed on the outside. And then I'm, you know, so I'm started thinking about that. So I was like, wow, okay. I really thought the eight and nine ran a good race, visually ran a good race. I love their marks. And then I started thinking, I started thinking, wow, I, I, I just have it as an EP day that day. You know how I always says I'm updating and downgraded biases? I, you know, just because I mark it one day, I never stop. So I'm thinking about it. And I started thinking, well, even though I didn't think it was a great day that day, we know that post one through three brings on 50% of the winners at Gulfstream. Uh, you know, he was in the one hole that day. He got the perfect trip. The eight and the nine were battling. The nine was the widest horse out. And I wanted to pull up my chart, the way I chart my races. So I pull up my chart right here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Where did it just go? I pull up my chart right here. Uh, usually when I mark my stuff, I do them on a quick sheet. And right away I noticed there was five races that day that were sprints that day. Three of them were on the inside. Three of them were, uh, two winners came from the one hole, one came from the three hole. Uh, I seen a five horse one, but he was coming from two lengths off, got the lead right after that. And then I seen the six horse one where he had the lead from the start of the race and went wire to wire. And I was like, what if this was more inside than I thought that day? What if the five and the six went right to the inside? And then we got, you know, that looks like an inside track all of a sudden. I started thinking about that replay in my head. I said, if you looked at that day, May 29th, like it was an inside trip. Right? The two horse that won the race, Sound Machine, got the best trip. Is he that good to bet right now at four to five? No, you want a first rule of racing, you're trying to get around these uh low price horses. And I said, Well, I was super impressed with the eight. The eight battled with the nine, and then he held on. Got no problem with that. And then I I was thinking about it. 
and I see the nine at about, or the uh, nine horse, which is the six horse, was at 50 to one. And the eight horse was at about eight to one. I, I know I'm going to Dutch. Uh, but I'm starting to think about it, and I was like, well, you should favor the six a little bit because he was farther outside. Uh, so this was a race that I wasn't that interested in and turned out being a major hit. So what I, what I came up with, I was going to Dutch six and eight to win. I put a little bit more money on the six to win, but, but I was playing both of those. I played a six to win in place. I did an all six in the, uh, exacta. You know what? I didn't do six and win the place. I, I did six to win some more, and I decided to do an all six. That's right. I did I did an all six in the exacta, and then I played a couple doubles. I used the three, who was a 10 horse in that race. Remember, he, he was on the outside. Uh, I didn't like him as much, but I decided to go three, six, eight to the five, eight. And then I did another ticket, six and eight to the five, eight. Uh, and anyways, that's history. It comes in. Six ends up winning the race at like 34 to one. Uh, the four got second. I wanted to have the four in second. So unless I did an all. And that kind of sucks because when I was, when I pulled the result for this race, when I actually pulled the result for this race, I noticed that the six and the four were both starship horses. And you guys that watch the show all the time know what I think of uh, star, starship horses. But anyways, here's the chart for that race. So, you know, we got the benefit of maybe it was being an outside track today. I liked what I watched on that race. Uh, you know, to me, I'm able to make, I'm able to go for these races. Uh, it's not just saying, hey, I'm trying to play a 35 to 1 shot. And, you know, there, there's reasoning. The four horse ended up finishing four, or I'm sorry, the the chalk, the five horse sound sound uh, sound sound machine ended up uh, finishing a bad fourth. Uh, I was a little surprised that the eight horse didn't win, or I'm sorry, that didn't run at all. Uh, but you know what? Uh, that's why I Dutch. That's why I Dutch when I got two long shots a lot. I don't I don't have a problem with Dutching, and then. Uh, so I was pretty happy with what I made just on the win ticket, but I was lucky enough to uh, uh, hit the double, the five horse, uh, one at a seven to two. I was also alive to the eight. Parsons and I were both alive to a Rolex uh, each if the eight horse won. Um, uh, the That was paying 2,000 to one, but we were getting 190 to one, which is usually huge, but it didn't feel that huge uh, after thinking you were alive to uh, 2,000 to one. But uh, you guys asked for this video. There there it is. That That's how I got to the hit. Uh, I mean, kind of just using my same, the same theories all the time, you know, uh, would have been nice if I would have upgrade or you know upgraded that rail on May 29th before this race, but I did go back in my form and I decided to update it after this win it uh for sure. But uh that's how I came up with them. <laughs> All right, take it easy. <laughs>